Hello guys welcome back to our YouTube channel, in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto becomes the Optru Uzumaki and got harem. Part 1. Huge shout out to Psychopath556 for this story. If you want more awesome fan fiction like this don't forget to hit that subscribe button, so without wasting any time let's get into the video. In the Hokage's office, Saratobi Hirazan sat with a frown scowl on his face, looking at the sleeping form of a 12-year-old Naruto Uzumaki. The young boy had been beaten unconscious by villagers earlier that night and had been rescued by a passing academy student, Anko Midarashi, who had seen the end of it happen and had broken the fight up capturing the attackers with the help of her summons, all of who are now waiting interrogation by Ibiki, head of the T&I division, torture and intelligence. Due to the boy's circumstances, Naruto's injuries had to be treated in his office. 15% of the hospital staff were volunteering citizens doing the smaller tasks around the building, but not one of them would have passed up the opportunity to try to make Naruto's short stay even shorter by trying to end his life. This had happened several times in the past, and Hiruzen had given up sending him there and had one of his anbu with the most medical experience treat him instead. The young Anko stood beside the elderly Hokage, looking down at the still sleeping Naruto as she thought. What could someone so young have done to earn such a beating, I've had my fair share of attempts, but that was just beyond brutal. She'd seen Naruto round and sure, the kid pulled some pranks every now and then, but nothing to warrant this kind of brutality, that was something else. Naruto's young form was completely bloody, his orange tracksuit ripped, his chest slashed, his nose broken, a bust lip, black and swollen eyes, swollen jaw, and numerous other injuries. There was an anbu with long purple hair in front of them tending to the boy's wounds. While most healed themselves, given who he was, anything broken had to be placed before it healed wrong, and the extra help didn't hurt. Although the Anbu wore a mask Anko knew who it was, Niko Ni Chan, will he be alright? The masked Anbu nodded, he'll be fine Anko Chan, Naruto kun, always heals fast. Anko heard the always comment, and she flinched, exactly, how many times has he been beaten like this, she asked not sure if she actually wanted an answer, he was so badly injured, she didn't want to think about someone having to go through something like that multiple times. There was silence for a few minutes before Hiruzen spoke, he's here for treatment almost three times a week if not more, and this is only the first this week, it's regrettable, but it's been like this for the whole of his young life. The statement shocked Anko to her core. What the hell, he's been beaten like this multiple times a week, but that just doesn't make sense, what possible reason could those bastards have for doing this to him, he's just a kid. Garrison scowled, ignorant reasons. That's why. The villagers don't know what they're doing. They blame Naruto-kun for things, not of his own doing. So much so that he's even adopted to using a mask over the years to hide the pain, most see him as a hyperactive happy boy who just wants to be noticed, when in reality it's just a mask he wears, those pranks he pulls are all an act. I check up on Naruto-kun regularly, most nights I do so with my crystal ball jutsu, only to find him crying his heart out into his pillow in bed in loneliness, it's the only time he drops his mask. Both Anbu and Anko were clenching their fists in anger. The Anbu scowled behind her mask, she knew the reason for this as she had been briefed when joining Anbu about any threats to the village, the Kikbi container was always a possible risk, but she couldn't speak of that outright, due to the Sandayami's laws. Anko snarled, what was out of his control to merit this kind of treatment? Hiruzen lowered his head, it's an S-class secret that no one is allowed to speak of under penalty of death, a law I passed. Anko tightened her fists, forgive me for being so forthright Hokage-sama, but that's just bull S on so many levels. It looks like everyone in the village already knows about whatever it is, so what's the point in forbidding them to talk about it? So Naruto-kun and the others his age don't find out, I'm not sure how he'd react to the news, and it was the only way I could think of to give him a chance at a normal childhood, Hiruzen said sadly. Anko looked at the elderly Hokage in rage, so even he doesn't know why he's being attacked and beaten multiple times a week, that's just plain wrong. Hiruzen nodded, I know it is, but he will be told when he is ready. He starts the academy in a few weeks, so if he passes and becomes a genin at 16 and then chknin after. Then I will reveal it to him. Anko slammed her hands on the Hokage's desk, trying to rein in her anger at what she was hearing, with all due respect, at the rate he is getting beaten. He won't make it to genin, screw chknin. And that's at least another four years of beatings, of not knowing why, even if he does make it to Genin. There is inside, Ikgao, remove your mask. The Niko Anbu took off her mask and nodded, as Hiruzen set down his pipe, Ikgao, what do you believe? I know you've been assigned to guard Naruto-kun at least once a week on the rotation, and there has never been an incident while you were on duty. Do you believe he is ready to know what we're talking about? Ikgao nodded, I do. I believe that Naruto-kun has much more intelligence than he lets on, the level of sophistication in the traps he uses in his pranks show great planning and skill, as well as a sense of style and appreciation for his work. 
He is hiding a lot more than just his emotions, if trained properly he will make a fine shinobi. I see no harm in telling him now. Girizin nodded as he lifted up his pipe for another drag before releasing it with a sigh, very well then, I believe I know a way that this might just work out for the best, but we will wait until Naruto-kun wakes up to discuss further. I will tell him and you, Anko, why he has been targeted, and finally tell him and give him something that should make his life a little easier. Scene break. After a few more minutes Naruto finally started to wake up groaning, ow, that hurt. Where am I? Pirazin smiles hearing Naruto's voice, in my office Naruto, you were rescued and brought here for rest and safety, by an academy student. Groaning Naruto sat up rubbing the back of his head with his eyes closed, ouch, thanks, Jiji, if you could tell that academy student I owe them one. Anko smirked hearing that, and I'll collect on it, she voiced looking at the blonde with a smirk. Hearing the voice Naruto's eyes opened to see the girl that it came from, damn she was cute, he blinked a few times, I take it, you're the one who saved me. Naruto asked looking at the girl only two years his elder. You've got that right, name's Anko Midarashi, Gaki she smirked. Naruto's eyebrow twitched, thanks for the save, name's Naruto Uzumaki, not Gaki. Naruto spoke emphasizing the not part. Anko smirked, whatever you say, Gaki. She grinned. Naruto's eye twitched again as he stood up, well, thanks for the breather Jiji, I think I'll head home Naruto turned towards the door to leave, but as he did he felt a little chill, before he looked down and his eyes widened, ah crap, what happened to my clothes they look like I've been oh yeah I was, great, just great, and this was my last good set, and it cost me 7000 Ryo. Hearing the price tag on that ridiculously horrible tracksuit, both Anko and Ikgao looked to the Hokage, whose eyes were shadowed under his hat, as a small amount of killing intent, K.I., leaked off him as he started to talk, Naruto just where did you buy that monstro? Dottie started but stopped before rephrasing, I mean that tracksuit. Naruto looked back to his grandfather figure, the civilian clothing store on the main street Y. Hirazin waved him off, well that's another one of those bastards for the rack and a visit to Ibiki, 7000 Ryo for that monstrosity, civilian stores can't sell anything over 3000, as per my law, and even at that there's no way that thing would be worth that, obviously overpricing him because of who he is, never mind Naruto, never mind, I was hoping you could stay a short time. There are some things I'd like to talk about with you if that's alright. Naruto gulped and waved his hands above his head frantically, if this is about the pink clothes dye in the Anbu uniform wash, I didn't do it. At that Hiruzen blinked, Ikgao looked at him wide-eyed, and Anko looked like she was about to bust a gut in laughter, as three other Anbu dropped from the ceiling, their usual all-black attire, now a bright fluorescent pink as they pointed at Naruto and yelled, it was you. At that moment Naruto and Anko couldn't hold their laughter as they fell to the ground clutching their guts, laughing at the sight of the three bright pink Anbu. Ikgao looked to be just about holding her own laughter back, luckily for her, she always washed her uniform at home and not at HQ, which begged the question. Just how did Naruto get into the most heavily guarded place in the whole village to pull his prank? While wearing a bright kill me now orange tracksuit. Hiruzen hid his laughter behind his a small sigh, all the while thinking, just like Kishina, always pranking, before clearing his throats making the Anbu salute before returning to their posts grumbling. Hiruzen smiled, no Naruto-kun it isn't about that, it's just that I believe it's time I told you a few things that I have been keeping secret from you. The young Naruto blinked, you've been hiding things from me Jiji. Naruto asked in a hurt tone. Hiruzen nodded sadly, not because I wanted to Naruto-kun. It's that it was necessary for your safety at the time and on some level, I wasn't sure how you would take it. But I think you're ready to know now, please take a seat. Hiruzen gestured in a kind tone. Naruto nodded his head in understanding and walked over to the chair in front of the Hokage's desk and sat down. Hiruzen nodded as Anko and Ikgao took their seats also, Hiruzen looked to Naruto. Naruto my boy, before we can begin, there is one thing I would like to ask you to do. Naruto blinked, what is it Jiji? He asked with a big grin. Hiruzen frowned, please take off that mask and show us the real you. Naruto immediately stiffened and his smile disappeared, this didn't go unnoticed by the two beside him seeing his reaction. Naruto gulped slightly, Jiji how do you know about that? The elderly Hokage frowned looking sadly at the boy, there isn't much I don't know Naruto, now please, let us see the real you that you keep hidden behind that mask. The young blonde tightened his fists and his body tensed slightly before relaxing. You could honestly see his eyes lose some of their brightness and innocence as he did so as a serious look covered his face. Hi Hokage-sama, Naruto responded making the old man look visibly shocked. Naruto never called him that, he had always called him Jiji or Hokage Jiji, hearing the formal name, and in such a tone took him back for a second, and he frowned. Naruto, is this the real you? Hiruzen asked sadly. Naruto nodded, hi Hokage-sama, it is. Hiruzen's fists tightened a bit in anger seeing his unofficial grandson this serious, and hearing such a tone from him at such an age, what has this village done to you Naruto? 
Naruto you can dispense with the formal titles, they aren't required at this moment, especially with what I'm going to tell you, Hiruzen said in a sad tone, desperately hoping to see some resemblance of the boy he had watched day by day, happily go about pranking, and not letting the looks the villagers gave him get to him. No not even a flicker, just a nod, hi was all he got. Clenching his fists tighter for a second before finally giving up and releasing them with a sigh, very well then let's get down to business, it's time I told you about he was about to continue when Naruto spoke. Excuse me for interrupting, but I do believe we're not alone, Naruto said as he looked over to the bookcase, this got the attention from the other occupants of the room. Hiruzen narrowed his eyes, what do you mean Naruto-kun? Assuming that you only have three Anbu in this room, all in pink I might add, there is another one hidden in the bookshelf watching us right now, Naruto reported making the other three Anbu drop from the ceiling around the bookcase weapons drawn. And suddenly, a black figure burst from behind the bookcase and tried to make an escape, only to be restrained by the other Anbu, lifting the man up, he wore a white animal mask like Anbu, but on the forehead was the kanji for Nadat. Seeing this Hiruzen clenched his fists again, nah, damn you Danzo I ordered that little group of yours disbanded, and now I find you spying on me, take him to the tea and I department, and have Ibiki informed I will be along within an hour or so, Hiruzen ordered getting nods from the three Anbu, as they shunshin away with the man in restraints. When they left the Hokage looked to Naruto along with Anko and Ikgao, Naruto, how did you know he was there when the rest of us didn't? Hiruzen asked. Naruto looked to him, a year or so ago my senses started to become more delicate, my sight and sense of sound and smell all became sharper. I could see things in greater detail and at greater distances, and I could smell the faintest smell, but also pick up on the more foul odors. I had to figure out how to cut the chakra to my nose for a while, and stop smelling for a week while I aired out my apartment, one bonus was I could smell any extra ingredients to any food I bought, so as not to poison myself. My hearing became so fine I could hear the faintest sounds and distinguish them from others, it's so fine I can hear heartbeats. There were four of us and three Anbu in the room, but yet I heard eight heartbeats, I merely followed my ears to find the one who didn't belong, Naruto reported not missing a beat. This made Hiruzen's eyes widen slightly, perhaps it's the Kikpus chakra making him stronger, if so all the better I tell him now, I see, then it's a good thing I'm choosing to tell you this now, because if what I suspect is correct, then both this and your heightened senses are connected. This made Naruto's eyes widen slightly as he looked to the Hokage with a nod of understanding, as he took his seat again. There is inside as Anko and Ikgao took their seats also, I suppose I should start with your parents Naruto-kun. Naruto's eyes widened, but you said you didn't. Hiruzen raised his hand, I did. But that was because of who they were, they both had many enemies your two sen especially, and you being announced as his son would have made you a prime target for assassination attempts. Naruto nodded slowly understanding, hey, are they still? Hiruzen shook his head, I'm sorry my boy, both of them died the night you were born, but I can tell you about them, Hiruzen smiled slightly, hoping to cheer the boy up some. Naruto nodded slightly, and a small smile graced his face at the thought of hearing about them, I'd like that, thanks Jiji. Hearing the affectionate name Naruto called him again made the Hokage smile, well at least there's still some of you in there, first your Kasan, her name was Kashina Yuzumaki, Naruto's eyes widened, yes you take your name from her side of the family, she couldn't give it up, due to her being the last of her clan. Naruto's eyes started to tear slightly, I I had a clan. Hiruzen nodded, yes the Yuzumaki clan from Yuzu, Yuzashi Agakur, village hidden in the whirlpools, they were the leaf village's greatest allies during the first and second shinobi wars, sadly though towards the end of the second in a combined attack from the Iwa, Iwagakur, village hidden in the stone, and Komo, Kumagakur, village hidden in the clouds, they were wiped out. Their Kaasan survived due to her Tusan, Mamori Uzumaki, clan head sending her away when they heard of the attack coming, they entrusted her with the entire clan jutsu library and funds, because they knew the clan wouldn't survive the attack coming, your Kaasan was one of the most headstrong, impulsive, eccentric, and stubborn girls you would ever meet. She was fun-loving, and was always playing pranks on anyone who made fun of her bright red hair, ironic that her hair was part of the reason she was so memorable in the third shinobi war. She gained the title of Red Hot-Blooded Habanero, she was a master of her clan's Kenjutsu and Kenjutsu, and was deadly on the battlefield, with them both in combination, and with her special chakra chains that were unique to her. When she found out she was pregnant with you, her and your two sen were so excited, they couldn't wait to be parents, and to watch you grow up, but sadly it wasn't meant to be here as and said with a sigh. So they did love me I always wondered if they did or not, if that was the reason they gave me up, but seeing as they're both dead I can understand, Naruto said with a small frown as he wiped a tear away from his eye. But you can be sure of Naruto-kun, I had never seen more people more excited to be parents than yours. Now Naruto, before I tell you of your two sen there is one thing I want you to understand first, should you decide to take his family name as your own, you can't do it until you become a genin. 
at least that way you will be able to protect yourself when you do, and you can't tell anyone you're his son until then. It would cause major complications and a lot of trouble, do you understand? Hiruzen said in a serious tone. Naruto nodded, I understand Jiji. The Hokage nodded, your two sons' name was Minato Namikaze, but you would know him better as the... Beyond I may, I'm the son of the fourth Hokage Naruto said, speechless at that very moment, not sure how to handle this, he was the son of the village hero, the man who died defeating the Kikbi no Kitsune, and who practically single-handedly ended the third shinobi war, with his version Horation no Jutsu, flying thunder god technique, a technique that he had copied from the Nidame. He was a master of the art of Kenjutsu, one of the only recorded students of the legendary San Jiraiya, who had been a student of the third Hokage, but if that was the case, there was only one thing that he couldn't grasp now, why? The three occupants of the room looked at him in confusion, why what, Naruto? Asked Hiruzen seeing the blonde clench his fists. Why, if I'm the son of the fourth, am I treated like the scum of the earth, why am I treated like this, beaten on a weekly basis? I was kicked out of the orphanage at four, I had to survive on the streets for two weeks eating garbage, sleeping in a cardboard box, trying not to lose my fingertips to rats. If I'm the son of the fourth why am I treated like I'm a plague? Why do I get glared at like I'm a fucking murderer? Naruto started as his voice rose into a yell as tears started to flow down his cheeks. Anko looked at the boy younger than her. She hadn't known about the boy's life before and she was shocked hearing it, she couldn't even comprehend what he had done to deserve this treatment, and being the Yan Dai Mei's son, means he should have been living in the lap of luxury. And if his Ka San was some clan head then he should be loaded, and yet he looked to be malnourished and dressed in the most horrible clothes possible. She had known hell, her parents had died when she was three, so she was an orphan too, but she had been taken in by the San and Orochimaru when she was six, he had seen potential in her, and had taken her as his student, and even let her sign the snake contract at the age of eight, of course. Things had all went sideways a year later when it was discovered he was a traitor, and was kidnapping shinobi and civilians for experiments. He had tried to take her with him when he left, but she didn't want to leave, that's when he turned on her, and gave her a curse mark before leaving her to her suffering. After that night, when all his crimes were revealed. Even though she had refused him, she was seen as nothing more than his pupil after that day, and people treated her like she was him. So being shunned and glared at and treated like crap she knew all too well, of course, she at least had it go. She had been the one who found her the night Orochimaru had left the village and took her to the Hokage, who had helped her through the curse mark. But unfortunately he couldn't remove it, it was doubtful anyone could, and so the mark served as a reminder of her sensei all these years. Ikgao had become like a big sister to Anko the two shared a two-bedroom apartment while Anko was in the academy, he's treated worse than me, but it doesn't make sense, why? Hiruzen stood up taking in a breath of his pipe and looked out the window to the village below, because this village is filled with stupid civilians that can't tell the difference between a container and its content, and is full of resentment, anger and hatred toward someone who had no control over and say in what happened to him, Hiruzen growled angrily releasing a little bit of K. I at the village in his anger. Ikgao looked down ashamed in agreement, but both Naruto and Anko still looked confused as to what the old man was talking about, Jiji what are you saying? What container? What content? The old man sat down with a defeated look on his face, he was getting too old for this shit. He just sighed, Naruto, what is your two san best known for? Filling the kick beyond the weight both my parents died the night I was I was born on the then they both died fighting but how? Naruto rambled holding his head as all the facts started to come together. Here is a nodded, you're starting to see Naruto. Both your parents died protecting the village from the Kikbi attack. No one knew where the Kikbi came from as it just appeared out of nowhere that night, but in truth, the Kikbi had been in the village for many years, but it had been sealed away. First it was sealed away into the wife of the Shadai Hokage, her name was Mido Yuzumaki, your grand-aunt, Mido Sama was sister to Mamori Yuzumaki, and the marriage between her and Hashirama Senju bonded the two clans, she was the first inch Kriki of the Kikbi, when she was dying, she passed that duty on to the only other one who could take it, the only Yuzumaki left at the time. Their Kasa and Kashina was the second Jinch Kriki of the Kikbi, because of the Yuzumaki's abnormally large chakra capacity, and as such abnormally large chakra coils, which dwarf most Kage, even my own, they were best suited to hold the Kikbi's vast chakra. No one knows what happened, but the night of your birth the Kikbi broke free from your Kasa and seal and attacked the village, and so your two San did the only thing he could do, the Kikbi is a massive chakra it can't be killed, so he had only one option left, he sealed it in the only vessel that could hold it, he. He sealed it inside of me, the Kikbi no Kitsune, the demon that killed a third of the village is sealed inside of me, Naruto said aloud in realization, Hiruzen nodded and was about to speak again, but Naruto continued. Now it all makes sense, the villagers, they they see me as the Kikbi, they see me as the one who killed their loved ones, those dumb fucking idiots. 
I'm not even an academy student yet, and even I know the difference between a kunai and the scroll it's stored in, those complete fucktards, that's it the next time they attack me I'm kicking some ass, to hell with running, I'm done with that, I'm going to fucking kill the lot of them. Ikgao blinked for a second looking at the blonde who had just taken a complete 180 in personality, one second he looked like he was about to cry, and now he looked like he was ready to take the next guy's head off him that looks at him wrong, what's with this kid? Ikgao though as she gave a small smirk. Anko couldn't help but grin and laugh looking at Naruto, I like your way of thinking Gaki, I'll even lend you a hand, I could use the practice. Here is inside hearing this, I pity the next ones who try anything with these two teamed up, I can just feel a headache coming on from the council screaming, and that Haruna woman screams shattered glass, I think she's part banshee. Garizan took a breath, well you do start the academy in three weeks Naruto, and when you become a shinobi of the village, there are laws preventing the civilians from touching you, giving you right to use lethal force, not that I would condone such things, but it's food for thought, Hiruzen said with a smirk of his own. Both Anko and Naruto started grinning like mad remembering that, and both Ikgao and Hiruzen had the same thoughts, Kami-sama helped the village when these two team up. Hiruzen cleared his throat, Naruto-kun, you also have an inheritance that your parents left you, sadly their house was destroyed in the Kikbi attack, but with your two San and Ka San being masters of Kenjutsu had a backup plan that if the house was destroyed, all objects in the house marked with a seal, were transferred into a sealing scroll in this office. They also gave me control over both the Namikaze and Yuzumaki banking accounts, should anything happen to them, I've been using some of the money to support you anytime you ask for an advance or increase, due to other matters not making it possible, but it hasn't even made a dent, seeing as the Yuzumaki were, to be blunt. Filthy rich from their work, and as per the arrangement and your parents will. 5% of the funds are available to you until your gen and when the rest will be available to you. Naruto nodded, thanks, Jiji, good to know I've got cash to burn, seeing as how the shops charge me triple the legal asking price. Hiruzen blinked, you knew. Naruto nodded, of course I did, I'm not as dumb as I look wearing this monstrosity Jiji, it was all the mask I was wearing. That, and it's all clothes the shops would sell me. Hiruzen nodded visibly angry, I see, well I'll see what I can do about that, do you have clothes to wear now Naruto? Naruto shook his head, no, this was my last tracksuit, I had four pairs, but they've all ended up like this one or worse. I see well we'll just have to get you some new clothes tomorrow, for now, Hiruzen snapped his fingers and an anbu in pink appeared, holding a black shirt, making Anko and Naruto giggle again, as the anbu tossed the shirt at Naruto before disappearing. The shirt was a few sizes too big, but he just pulled off his old one, much to Anko's shock, he wasn't malnourished, he was actually well toned with no fat on him, whatsoever, he was well built for that of a 12 year old, as he pulled on the new shirt and tucked it in, he got a blinking response from Anko. Damn it Gaki, how did you get so ripped? And you're only 12. Anko said licking her lips. Naruto shrugged, I'm planning to be a shinobi, so I have to be in shape. When I knew I was going to the academy, I'd planned to take the mask off and show everyone what I was really like. Now hearing all this, I plan to kick butt even more. Hiruzen smiled hearing that, well if that's the case Naruto, I think I have just the things to get you started, he said as he got up and walked over to a safe opening it and pulling out a scroll. Walking back to his desk he opened it revealing a storage seal array. Channeling chakra into it there were a series of poofs of smoke. As it cleared it showed a few things, one was another scroll, two letters, and the final was a small box about the size of a loaf of bread. Hiruzen lifted up the two letters and handed them to Naruto, your parents gave me these to give to you when I finally told you about them, I'm sure you'll want to read them in private, but come see me if you have any questions. Naruto looked at the letters for a few moments, and then smiled thanks, Jiji. Hiruzen nodded before handing him the scroll, and in this is the instructions on how to perform the Kage Bunshin, Shadow Clone, No Jutsu, Kishina was never able to perform the regular Bunshin, Clone, Jutsu, because of her massive amounts of chakra, as in Yuzumaki, it's impossible for someone so young to perform it, so the Kage Bunshin will be your version of it. Your Ka-san left you her notes on it in the scroll as well, I hope it helps. Naruto smiled, I'm sure it will Jiji, I'll start learning it tomorrow after I get some new clothes. Hiruzen nodded, and finally, I have this for you, Hiruzen said as he pushed the box forward, opening it up as the front pulled away showing a collection of blank scrolls and paper with five ink bottles, brushes and a scroll labeled Genjutsu Book 1. Beginner 1. Naruto blinked at it and then looked to Hiruzen, if you're anything like your parents, you'll be a genius at Genjutsu like both of them. Your Ka-san was a master of your clan's Genjutsu style, and she taught your two sen everything she knew, it was because of your mother's teaching that your two sen was able to create his own version of the Nidame's Horation, if you do decide to pick it up then. Naruto smiled, that's perfect Jiji, I was planning in the future to actually study Genjutsu later on at the academy, but if I can start it early, then that would be great. 
Garrison frowned, actually Naruto, Genjutsu isn't taught at the academy. The academy covers the three basics, ninjutsu, tojutsu and genjutsu, along with the history of the elemental nations and other things deemed relevant by the civilian council. Naruto raised an eyebrow, maybe I'm just not getting the full picture here, but is that right? I mean a civilian council, deciding what's right to be taught in a shinobi academy in a shinobi village, shouldn't it be the shinobi side and you who decide the chiji? Irizan nodded, you would think so, but I've got so much paperwork I don't have time to work everything, damn paperwork. Naruto blinked, ah, what about that Kage Bunshin? If I'm reading this right they retain all your memories, Naruto said as he read the first few lines of the scroll out of curiosity, so why not create a few of them to do the paperwork for you Jiji? At that very moment you could hear a fly fart in the room, and then the next second Hiruzen lunged across the table at Naruto hugging him. Thank you Naruto, thank you. I have been trying to get away from that paperwork for years, and now it might be finally possible, thank Kami-sama for you Naruto. Both Anko and Ikgao looked at the scene sweat dropping, and the next second Hiruzen was back on his feet coughing, that incident is now classified SSS class, talking about it means immediate death am I clear he said in a serious voice. But all three just burst out laughing, that's a good one Jiji. Here is inside walking back to his desk, now Naruto, I think it would be best that you move departments, seeing as how your other one is so run down, I will begin looking for a new place for you to stay tomorrow, while we go clothes shopping for you. Ikgao interrupted then, excuse me Hokage-sama, I believe I may have a place that could accommodate Naruto-kun here, there is an apartment in the complex where myself and Anko live just next door, the rent is 750 ryo a month, and it is spacious enough for a boy of his age. Naruto smiled, that sounds perfect. That's three times cheaper than what I'm currently paying for rent, so I'm already sold. The Hokage looked at Naruto, Naruto what do you mean? Your rent is only 450 ryo a month, and it comes out of the treasury as you're an orphan. Naruto just slapped his own forehead, how didn't I get that, damn stupid landlord's been charging me 2500 ryo every month out of my own pocket. Hiruzen clenched his fists, finally having enough of this, before snapping his fingers making an Anbu appear who wasn't in pink, arrest a landlord for crimes of tax evasion and cheating the treasury, take him to Ibiki and inform the scum all assets of his are seized, and he is stripped of his citizenship and all his assets transferred under the name Naruto Uzumaki. Mark them as reparations for crimes against himself. The Anbu nodded, before disappearing. Hiruzen nodded and looked to Naruto congratulations Naruto you are now property owner. Everyone sweat dropped and Naruto shrugged, well I can just knock it all down and sell off the land, the place is a dump. The girls and Hokage nodded and then spoke, right shall we go and see this apartment, then Naruto, I'll have you put on the lease by night's end, Naruto grinned, sounds good to me. With a smile, all four of them started walking off to go see Naruto's new apartment, with one thing was certain things were going to change a lot. Naruto opens his eyes and blinks looking up at the unfamiliar ceiling, where the hell am oh yay my new apartment. The blonde stood up and rolled up the futon he had been using the night previously, that the Hokage had sent one of his anbu for until they got Naruto his furniture later that day. Naruto looked over to the side of his room to see the chest, scroll, and letters the Hokage had given him, deciding now was as good a time as any to read the letters he picked them up and slid down the wall and opened the first of the letters, it was a woman's handwriting. Dear Naruto-kun. If you are reading this then the worst has come to pass, and I and your two sen are no longer alive. I want to apologize for that above all, I did not want to leave you. Even though I only got to hold you for a few minutes I will always hold those minutes close to my heart, you look so adorable. I am writing this as your two sen holds you, you look so much like him, I can already tell you're going to be a real lady killer when you grow up just like your two sen. I hope you grow up to be a kind, strong and gentle man, my only regret is that I won't be there to see it. There is so much I want to say so much I want to tell you, so many memories I want to share, so much I want to know. I wonder what your life will be like after we're gone. I wonder who will be your first love, your favorite food, color, book, your first words. Oh, Naruto-kun I don't want to leave you, but I have no choice. The kitby was ripped from me and set on a rampage, and the only way to seal it is in an Uzumaki, I can't do it in my weakened state, it would only break free again, it has to be you. I have pleaded with your two cent to find another way, but there isn't time. I just hope that the village will see you for the hero you are keeping the kickby at bay. Please forgive me for leaving you Naruto it is not by my choice, just know that you are loved and will always be loved. All the love in the world. Your Kasan, Kashina Yuzumaki. Halfway through the letter Naruto had started tearing up and now he was crying his heart out as tears flowed from his eyes as he read the letter over and over again through watery eyes, finally after crying for what seemed like hours he folded the letter and put it to the side as he opened the second letter. Dear Naruto. Since you're reading this then that means the old monkey finally told you who we were. I'm sure that came as a bit of a shock, didn't it? 
It also means that you've been told that you hold the kickbee and that I was the one to seal it inside of you. I wish there was more time to look for another way to do it, I wish we had more time, but as I write this your Ka-san is lying down with you in her arms, and the kickbee is being held back from the village by our shinobi. They can't last much longer so I must be brief. Your Ka-san won't be around to tell you this as the kickbee was ripped from her, Jinchkrikas can't survive without their bijkin them, and right now it's only her will keeping her alive, but she can't last much longer. She doesn't want me to seal it in you, but there is no one else that can hold the kickbee, and even if there was as Hokage, I can't ask someone else to give up their child for such a task. The kickbee was ripped from your Ka-san by a man in a cloak and mask with one eye socket. I chased him off but the kickbee is still on the rampage. I don't know why he did it, but what's done is done. Though he may return in the future so be on alert, I know you will be strong enough to fight off whatever comes at you, you are my son, after all, I believe you can do it. I have told the old monkey you are to take your Ka-san's name as I know that if you are named my son and the Jinch Kriki, then your life will be far too dangerous. But if you want to take my name I have made preparations. Sealed at the back of this letter are blood samples of both mine and your Ka-san's, along with your birth certificate. The hospital will also have mine and Kashina's blood on record, give them to the old man when or if you want to take on my name, they will prove you are our son. Also sealed is the remains of your Ka-san sword, it was broken in the attack when the man in the mask took you and killed Sarutaba's wife, I didn't tell him this, so he could focus on the battle, and not go searching for the man who is already long gone, so I now leave that to you. Gamenasai. There should be a blacksmith weapons shop called Shinobi Arms. The owner Daichi Ashiro was the only one your Ka-san allowed to even touch her blade apart from herself or me. He was also the one who made my Horatian kunai. Once he sees the sword he will no doubt put the facts together. If you want to learn your Ka-san's clan's kenjutsu I'm sure that would make her very happy, so I've sealed away the beginner scroll in the letter as well, along with a few of your Ka-san's clan jutsu, the rest I'm sure the old monkey can give you from our vault. They are quite a drain on chakra from those who are not in Yuzumaki, but with such large reserves already I know you will be just fine. I have to go now, just know that I will always love you, and that I can only hope that you can come to forgive me for putting this burden on you, and then leaving you, I know you will make us both proud. With all the love I can give. Your two San Minato Nami Kazi Yan Daime Hokage of Kanahagakura no Sato. Naruto slowly set the letter taking a deep breath as a few tears escaped his eyes, I forgive you too San, and I will make you proud. Looking to the back of the letter there was a large seal on it. Channeling chakra into it poofed unsealing the contents. On the floor now in front of him sat an assortment of objects, first there was a birth certificate with two files of blood on it. There were five scrolls with different colored bands around them, and finally a katana. It was magnificent the handle was wooden with a gold hilt with a red cloth grip to the guard, which was also golden, which was actually the Yuzumaki swirl, the blade was broken in the middle, but as his two sen had mentioned the blade had been so when sealed. A scroll beside it was full of the Yuzumaki Kenjutsu Naruto, let his hand glide over the handle of the Kanata. Don't worry Ka-san I'll make you both proud Naruto then looked at the Kage Bunshin scroll, and I'll start right now taking the scroll he started reading it back to front and re-read his Ka-san's notes. Kage Bunshin this technique creates copies of the user. However, these clones are corporeal instead of illusions. The user's chakra is evenly distributed among every clone, giving each clone an equal fraction of the user's overall power. The clones are capable of performing techniques on their own and can even bleed, but will usually disperse after hit by a strong enough force. The clones can also disperse on their own or be dispelled by the user of the technique. Shadow clones can't be distinguished from the original with a Sharingan or Byaku Gondenjutsu, which is handy to use when fighting them. Also, they come in handy when doing chores around the house. The handy thing to remember about the Kage Bunshin technique is that the user retains all the memories from the clones once they are dispelled, this make techniques that require muscle memory or memorizing information easier to get down, as they say, two heads are better than one, though for an Yuzumaki it's more like 200. Extra note. Must teach this technique to Minato, this technique would be great in bed. Reading that last bit Naruto immediately blushed red, realizing what it meant, and then shook his head, oh great my Ka-san was a pervert, well at least I know where I get that part of me from, but those clones sound really handy muscle memory that's like stances, punches, kick, hand signs and movements like riding, this could really help me out when I start learning Kenjutsu, Naruto grinned. Well I guess I know what I'm learning first, but I've only got a few hours until Jiji comes to get me and we go furniture and clothes shopping, a plenty of time to get this one down, now let's see here. Time skip one hour later. There was a knock at the door, and Naruto walked over to answer it, he opened it to show a smirking Anko. Morning Gaki, how's things? Anko asked with a grin. Naruto smirked back, going slow this morning, trying to get this Kage bunch and Jutsu down, never learned a Jutsu before. 
Benko chuckled, I'll give you a hand then, I always wanted to learn some other type of clone aside from the regular, she said as she came in, and the two sat down and started going over the scroll. Naruto looked to Enko, thanks again for the save yesterday, you really saved my ass. Enko giggled, no problem Gaki, it's a nice ass to be saving. Naruto looked to Enko, you only just met me yesterday, and now you're complimenting my ass. You sure do have a strange sense of timing, especially for someone around our ages. Enko shrugged, what can I say, a girl likes what she likes. Naruto shook his head with a smirk and went back to reading the scroll. Time skip one more hour later. Hiruzen walked to Naruto's new apartment and knocked on the door, hearing a whole pile of ruckus inside he raised an eyebrow, what's going on in there? The next thing the door opened showing the room full of Naruto and two Anko being tossed about like beach balls, this ISNT funny gaki. Anko yelled as she was tossed yet again. The Naruto clones were all laughing watching them go, we think it is. All the clones yelled laughing. But then Hiruzen coughed getting everyone's attention causing all the clones to drop the two girls, one going off in a poof, and then in another larger explosion of smoke, the horde of Naruto clones disappeared, leaving only one with a grin on his face, hey Gigi, we were wondering when you were going to get here. Hiruzen chuckled hearing the blonde, well Naruto, I can see both you and Anko have the Kage Bunshin down, impressive, learning an AR Ank Ninjutsu in just a few hours, and your very first one also, you certainly are your two San son. Naruto grinned rubbing the back of his head sheepishly, yeah it wasn't easy, it wasn't until Anko-chan came over and helped me that I finally got it down flat. The Hokage blinked and smiled, oh so it's Anko-chan, now is it, my aren't you two getting friendly quickly he grinned. Naruto chuckled, oh two can play at that game Jiji, well you know what they say about those who become ninja, old enough to kill and all that, plus she's cute I wouldn't mind. The old Hokage's eyes widened hearing that as he felt a nose bleed just about to come on, he quickly turned and coughed bringing his hand up to cover it, cough, quite right Naruto-kun quite right, now let's be off, we still have to get you sorted with clothes and new furnishings for your apartment he said, starting to walk away. Naruto was about to follow when he felt a weight being draped over his shoulders, he looked back to see Anko leaning on him with a very big grin, what was that all for Gaki, did you just say that to bust his balls, or did you actually mean that you said she asked with a suggestive tone in her voice, but with a slight hint of fear. Naruto heard the slight tone in her voice, truthfully, yes. But you have to understand Anko-chan, I've never had very many friends, you'd probably be the first. I didn't want to do anything to risk that friendship so soon. When I saw you you were gorgeous, you're beautiful and strong, clever, and don't judge me for having the kick be in me. I'd have to be a complete moron not to have feelings for you. Anko was taken back by that here was this boy she had only just met the other day, complimenting her like that, calling her beautiful and telling her he has feelings for her. For some reason it made her feel nice, she smiled, not seductively, not sadistically, but happily. You really think that she blushed for the first time in her life the young snake charmer blushed. Naruto nodded, I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it, so Anko-chan what do you say, should we give it a go, slowly to see where it leads. Anko blushed again with a smile, sure, I wouldn't mind. Naruto smiled holding out his hand she slowly took it and they began to walk forward to the door. Anko looked at Naruto who had a slight smile on his lips, it made her smile, you know Naruto-kun, you're my first real friend too. Naruto looked to her sad hearing that, I'm sorry to hear that. Anko nodded softly, it was because of my first sensei, when I was 7 years old, I was taken under his wing, he trained me, but when I was 9, he was branded a traitor for crimes against the village, he left and tried to take me with him, but I refused to go. It's because of him that I'm looked at as if I was the traitor as if I'm him. Naruto stopped hearing that, Anko's heart hitched, what if he thought of her the same way, what if he was just like all the others, what if her thoughts were halted when Naruto wrapped his arms around her and held her in a hug. I'm sorry he said softly, and he hugged her making Anko's eyes widened, what did he have to be sorry for, I'm sorry you had to go through all the pain you have, I'm sorry we couldn't have been friends sooner, but I swear I will not let anyone hurt you again. Hearing that almost brought Anko to tears she hugged onto the younger boy for dear life, Naruto smiled feeling her hug him tighter and let the girl have her moment before they separated and walked out of the apartment hand in hand, but before they did Naruto quickly ran back and took his ka -sen's broken sword which was sealed inside a scroll with him before they walked out. As they walked out the Hokage looked to them and see them holding hands, and he smiled, good for you Naruto good for you, well shall we get going, we have lots to buy. Both Naruto and Anko nodded and walked along with the Hokage heading for the shops. Scene break both Naruto and Anko walked down the street beside the Hokage, Naruto looked to the elderly Hokage, Jiji, do you know of a shop called Shinobi Arms? Hiruzen nodded, why yes I do Naruto, it's run by an old friend of your two sans, the man knew your two san back in the academy and even became a shinobi, but retired after a mission of his went bad and he lost his teammate sadly. 
He now runs the shop, your two San and Ka San used to visit it frequently. Why do you ask? Naruto tapped the scroll he had, my Ka San left me her sword, though it was broken in the incident when the Kikbi was released, my two San said in the letter to take it to him for repairs, as he's the only one Ka San ever allowed to work on her blade, also after this there's something I need to tell you about what happened the day of my birth. About how the Kikbi was released and what happened after. The elderly Hokage saw the look in the boy's eyes of sadness, whatever it was painful for someone, the Hokage nodded, alright my boy after we're done shopping, we'll go back to my office to talk. Naruto nodded in thanks, he wasn't looking forward to telling the man he looked up to as a grandfather about that night, about how the man who not only released the Kikbi that caused both his parents' deaths was also the one who killed his wife, it would not be a pleasant conversation. Scene break. The bell rang as the three of them walked into the store, as they did a man came out he was huge at least 7 foot tall with a body that looked like a hunk of muscle, he wore a black shirt and thick navy cloth pants, his hair was long and black, but was kept in a braid that ran to the middle of his back. He wore a white blacksmith's apron over his front which had multiple marks on it, showing it was worn a lot. Humming out of the back the man blinked seeing the two children coming into his store, along with that of the Hokage of the village, the man immediately lowered his head, Hokage-sama, it's an honor for you to grace my store with your presence today, what might I help you with? The elderly Hokage smiled seeing the man again, ah Daichi-kun it's good to see you again it's been too long, I'm just bringing along this one here to get him kitted out in some new attire, he personally requested to come here. The large man blinked and looked to the young blonde boy knowing who he was in an instant. Not many didn't know of the Kikbi container in the older generations, but he knew his friend's work would hold and didn't hold the fact against the boy. Oh well this is a surprise, boy why did you request to come here, not that I'm not flattered, but normally people have to shop at a store once to know if they like the place, and I'm certain you've never shopped here before, so what made you want to? The blonde smiled seeing the rather large man and hearing the way he talked to him, and he knew that he wasn't like the rest of the village, there was no malice in his voice, well that's actually quite simple, Ashiro-san, my Ka-san trusted your work, and I figured why shouldn't I do the same he said as he approached the counter taking the scroll out of his pocket as he went. Daichi looked at the boy blinking, as far as he had known Minato had chosen an orphan to house the Kikbi, and the boy had never known who his parents were so this was a confusing statement. Oh is that a fact, and who was your Ka-san boy? Naruto smiles and unfurled the scroll and touching the seal looking at the large man, the last owner of the sword, Naruto stated before channeling chakra opening the seal and bringing the sword out. H's eyes widened seeing the sword in front of him, he hadn't seen that sword in 12 years he knew Kashina and Minato very well, and he knew that sword just as well, he had spent so many hours working on it. Shocked he looked at the sword and then to the boy in front of him, and then it hit him. He was one of the few to know about Minato and Kishina's marriage, there was only 12 or so who actually knew about it, it had been a small event to keep it that way after all what would Kumo and I would do, if they heard the two biggest threats to them got married, that would just be asking for trouble. And now here was this boy, in front of him claiming Kishina was his Kasan, and looking like a mini Minato, with whiskers, he had to be sure. He looked to the Hokage for confirmation to get a sad nod, making the man's eyes widen more as he looked back to the boy in front of him, well I'll be damned, Minato you sly dog he said before bursting into a hearty laugh, he pulled one over on the whole village from beyond the grave I swear I did not see that one coming, Yuzumaki-san, your parents were my best friends back in the academy. You are always welcome in my store he said with a big smile. Naruto grinned back at him thank you, Ashira-san. Daichi waved his hand in front of him gesturing no, enough of the formalities, call me Daichi, the son of my best friend, has that right, Naruto nodded, Daichi ran his hand over the blade and smiled, the red maelstrom, that's what your Ka-san named her blade, it was the last blade to be made from Yuzu. They had this technique in forging their metals that made them stronger than most, and when Yuzumaki chakra runs through it, that is where it really shines. Have you held it yet? Naruto shook his head, no I was waiting until it was repaired, and that's why I'm here my two cents said in his letter to me, that you were the only one my ka sent trusted to work on her blade. That I was, he said as he lifted the broken katana up looking at the break, it's repairable, but it's going to take a few weeks, Yuzumaki blades takes months to form. The metal is steeped in pure Yuzumaki chakra, you two sent came up with a way to repair the blade using seals replicating the Yuzumaki chakra for just the purpose, I'll pull them out and start working on it tonight he then turned the handle towards Naruto, here channel your chakra through the blade and see what made Yuzumaki steel so special. Naruto took the blade in his hand and focused channeling his chakra through the blade as told, he opened his eyes to see the metal was actually glowing red with his chakra in it, cool. 
Very Yuzumaki blades are meant to only be wielded by an Yuzumaki. Now that you've wielded it, it's bound to you. It won't let anyone but you or those you allow to wield it. Should they try the blade will increase in weight, making it impossible to lift, along with giving the fool who tried to wield it nasty chakra burns. So Naruto-san, will Konoha be getting a new red death in the future? Or rather yellow death. Naruto looked confused for a second until the Hokage spoke up, that was your Kaas and other nickname given during the war, she was known as the Red Death because of her swordsmanship and her red hair. Add in the trail of bodies she left between here and Kumo, the woman was a master with a blade with no equal, Daichi said with a smirk. Anko whistled, the more I hear about your Kaasama Naruto-kun, the more I'm starting to like her more and more, she sounds like she was a total badass. Naruto grinned, yay, and yes hopefully in the future it will, I'm planning to learn my Ka-san's kenjutsu and take after my two san and kenjutsu, I plan on making them both proud. That brought a smile to the Hokage's face, you already have Naruto-kun more than you know. Daichi nodded, well now that that's out of the way, let's get you kitted out, any specific style you're looking for. Naruto smiled, yay I've got a few idea. Time skip. After about three hours of pulling clothes, with Anko adding her own commentary and saying he should add a trench coat to it all, Naruto finally had his outfit. Steel toes shinobi boots, black, with chakra metal caps for extra strength and durability. Black anbu combat trousers, made of a thick and durable fabric, with pockets on both the shins and thighs for kunai and other equipment. A black mesh shirt with red rims around the arms, neck and waist, with red chakra bandages around his midsection. Black fingerless anbu gloves with metal backplates, and taking Anko's advice a black shinobi trench coat with chakra metal shoulder pads, and on the back had the kanji for, ninth demon down the back in deep red, with the Yuzumaki clan mark right above it. When the Hokage asked him why he had that put on it, Naruto simply shrugged saying, that's what the rest of the village see me as, may as well tell them if they try anything now, they're screwed. Anko chuckled, with a rather sadistic grin. I like it. Daichi nodded, your two sen designed some seals that will make that coat last you. I already took the liberty of applying them to the one you're wearing and to the two others in your order. They're for durability and fit. They make the coat grow with your body, should you suddenly take a growth spurt the coat will grow with you, how do you think some of the Akamichi use their expansion jutsu without tearing their clothes off them? Your two sen designed it for them, before that they had to always wear chakra cloth to allow it to grow with them, but your two sen fixed all that, and with the durability seal, it's as though it's high grade body armor. It won't burn or rip without some major firepower behind the attack, so unless you're fighting a Kage level shinobi, I don't think you'll be needing any more soon. Naruto grinned, thanks, oh, and do you sell training weapons here? Daichi nodded, yes we do, what were you looking for, a bakken for training while your Kasan's blade is in for repair? Naruto nodded, yay and about 300 of them if you don't mind. Daichi and the Hokage blinked, why so many Naruto-san, are you worried about the quality? Yes Naruto-kun you could just buy maybe three now and if you need more in a few years come back reason here's an. Naruto shook his head, no, I'm not worried about the quality Daichi-san, and I don't think three would do with the way I plan on training Jiji. If what my Kaas and wrote down on the Kage Bunshin scroll is correct, I should be able to use them to get the stances down on the Kenjutsu style with them, and then put them to work sparring after in order to train, and I'd still get the experience and muscle memory. The Hokage nodded, I see, just be careful with that Naruto, you could damage your mind creating so many clones like that, the influx of memories could hurt, dispel them in groups of about 10 or so, when you do use that method, so as not to hurt yourself. Naruto nodded and looked at Daichi, very well Naruto san I will go and get your bakkins, I'll have them in the storage scroll at the front counter with the rest of your order, anything else. Naruto nodded, yes, about 5,000 kunai, shuriken and senbin needles, 20 large scrolls of seal paper, 500 liters of ink, and 500 kenjutsu brushes and ink jars. Handwriting and throwing are also about muscle memory, I'm going to be blitzing my training when I get home. I want to get through as much as I can before I start the academy in three weeks. Daichi nodded again, alright then I'll have the supplies and scrolls by the front desk before turning and leaving to the back. Hiruzen nodded hearing Naruto's plans, Naruto-kun if you want I could, after our meeting, write you up a training schedule to help you train for the next few weeks. I'd also recommend you send some clones to the library to read up on survival guides to pick up other skills like hunting and fishing, and reading up on history, law, politics, and other villages might help also, we could factor all that in also if you'd like. I could also assign you a kenjutsu instructor to help you with your stances and assess your skills as you progress, I think I have a pair in mind just for that job. Naruto smirked, that would be great Jiji. I can use all the help I can get, though the librarian doesn't like me, much like the rest of the village Naruto finished trolling his eyes. 
The Hokage waved him off, no need to worry about it Naruto-kun I'll see to it that you can come and go as you please, Hiruzen said as they walked to the counter again, Daichi came out of the back with a number of ladled scrolls. Here's everything Naruto-san, I even threw in about 50 practice dummies into another scroll for practicing on free of charge for the amount you've just body smiled. Naruto grinned, thanks, I'll definitely be making use out of them, so how much does all of that come to? The five sets of outfits come to 35,000 a set, the three coats with seals 5,000 apiece, the 300 bakans at 500 per, the shuriken at 150 per, kunai at 175 per and senbon at 125 per, then the large scrolls of sealing paper at 15,000 apiece, and then the ink at 2,000 a litter. Then the brushes and jars as 100 per set, brings the total to 3 million, 40,000 ryo, yen, Daichi said running up the numbers. Anko blinked at the price thinking, holy shit that's a lot of dango. Naruto looked to the third Hokage, who smiled as he handed Naruto the card for his account, Naruto swiped it, and the man nodded. Naruto then gestured Jiji to lean down, Jiji just how much is 5% of the Uzumaki clan account? The elderly Hokage smiled, before whispering something into Naruto's ear, making his eyes widened and he mentally screamed, holy fuck that's a whole lot of ramen. Scene break and time skip. Naruto sat across from his grandfather figure in his office, whose fists were clenched and shaking. Naruto had just told him about what was in the letter his two cent had left him, which told about what happened the night of the Kikbi attack, about how a man had appeared killed his wife and released a Kikbi upon the village. Naruto had been sitting for the past 10 minutes in silence as the old man went through the events and that Naruto had told him about. Finally, the man spoke. Thank you for telling me about this Naruto-kun, your two sen was right to keep it from me, had I had known I would have chased a bastard to the ends of the elemental nations, I'm ashamed to say. I had always wondered what happened that night now I know, you have done me a great kindness, Hiruzen said his voice showing restraint from both anger and breaking down at that moment in tears. Naruto nodded hearing the tone, you're welcome Jiji if you want I can come back tomorrow or whenever you're feeling up to it and we can sort out my schedule then. The old Hokage shook his head, no, I'm fine my boy, thank you for your concern, but it's been so many years the pain of the loss has numbed, now let's get to the criteria of what you want to learn over the next three weeks so we can get started on your schedule. Naruto nodded knowing the old man was lying, that he just needed the distraction at the moment, so he would give him one, and this at the very moment just added another reason why Naruto would hunt down the bastard that did this and end him. Naruto stretched out his arms in his nice new bed, as the sun came in through the cracks in the bamboo Venetian blinds in Naruto's newly furnished bedroom. He had had it fully kitted out that day three weeks ago, he had a queen-size bed installed along with silk sheets and a fully wood frame with no footing, a shag rug over the solid wood flooring, two large wardrobes, one for shinobi clothing and the other for civilian. He stretched out his arms happily feeling the weight on his chest, he looked to the still sleeping Anko, who was in a pair of purple silk pajamas. She had started sneaking over in the middle of the night two weeks ago, and after the first night, she had said she couldn't sleep without her cuddly foxy coon, which she had now made his nickname, whereas his for her was Hibihimi, after seeing her snakes for the first time when they trained. The first night she had snuck and she had slept in just her panties. This nearly made Naruto pass out from blood loss the morning he woke up. From then on he had insisted until they were both out of the academy she wear pajamas, they were still too young for things like that. She was going to disagree, but Ikgao put her foot down and agreed with Naruto saying it's either that or no foxy coon. Anko had agreed after that, knowing full well her sister can be just as scary and sadistic as her when she wants to be, and she paid the rent. She could always live with Naruto, but then it would have been his house and his rules, so she would have had to either way. Naruto smiled seeing her sleeping peacefully, but then he looked at the alarm clock, seeing it was 8, and the academy started at 10. So he decided to wake her up. Over the past three weeks, the two of them had gotten closer and were officially a couple, though their dinner dates were either they ate in or ate at either the dango shop or Ichirikus Raymond. As no other restaurant would serve the kickby brat and the snake whore, but their first date had actually gone better than expected, and even more so that both the stores were across the street from one another. Flashback. Naruto sat down with Anko at Ichirikus with a smile, hey Tuchi Oji, how's you? Naruto greeted the Raymond chef as he came out of the back. He wore an all-white chef's outfit with a small hat on his head with the kanji for Raymond on it. Duchi smiled seeing Naruto, ah Naruto-kun I'm fine, haven't seen you in the past few days. Have you been busy? Naruto nodded, yay moving into a new apartment and starting a training schedule before I start the academy in a few weeks time. Things have been busy, to say the least. Hey I'd like you to meet my friend Anko-chan Naruto said introducing Anko. Gucci nodded to Anko with a smile, it's a pleasure to meet you Anko-chan, and it's nice to see Naruto-kun is making some friends. 
It's nice to meet you Tatuchi-san, Naruto-kun here had mentions your Raymond is, and I quote food of the gods, but I'm still skeptical Anko greeted with a smirk. Gucci smirked, oh, so it's Naruto-kun, is it, well this is interesting, Naruto just wait until Aim chan gets an earful of that, you're in for a load of teasing you too. So you two dating yet? Both Anko and Naruto blushed red, and Naruto started to stutter, actually Tuchi Oji, this kind of is our first one, we're taking it slow. Gucci smiled at the blonde, I understand that Naruto, I'll tell Aim chan to keep it to a minimal, so what's this I hear about you doubting my Raymond's reputation Anko-chan? Well it's just that, it's impossible for two foods to be the food of the gods. She said with a grin. Gucci crossed his arms, is that so, then do tell. What is it you believe can beat my Raymond? Anko grinned, the food that tops all other, Dango. Gucci looked to Naruto, you brought a Raymond virgin into my restaurant didn't you? Naruto nodded sadly, I've been trying to make her see the light for the past two days, but I can't get through to her, please help me oh Raymond Sanon. Gucci nodded, do not worry my child, we shall show her the way of the righteous dish that is Raymond. three Naruto specials coming up the proud chef said as he went into the back only to emerge moments later, with the three bowls setting them down, both Naruto and Tucci bowed to the bowls in respect. Bowl praised the Raymond Kami-sama for what you are about to receive, for it is through him that we spread the word of the righteous Raymond through the world, so that even more may enjoy its righteous ways. Amen. Anko just sweat dropped hearing the two of them, but thought in her head, how did they know the sacred prayer of the Dango Kami-sama? The three of them took up their chopsticks and started to eat, upon first day Stanko's eyes turned into stars, making both Tucci and Naruto smirk, but said nothing and kept eating, until all three bowls were empty. Anko felt back stars still in her eyes making Naruto and Tucci shake their heads. The first bowl is always the best, and the Naruto special has been perfected over six long years of trial and error, until the Kami-sama of all Raymond dishes had been perfected. It is the signature dish of this establishment if it cannot turn a Raymond virgin into a Raymond lover. Then nothing can and they are forever lost to the way of the Raymond. Gucci said speaking in a tone sounding so much like a wise sage who has spent decades honing his mind, instead of honing his Raymond, which are but one in the same. After several moments Anko stood up still rather shaky on her feet, after sitting back on the stool and sipped a glass of water, she nodded slowly, that, that was something else, incredible, but there is only one way to be sure, I propose another taste test. Gucci and Naruto shared a look and nodded, Naruto spoke, very well Anko-chan we shall allow you your taste test on the sacred ground of the Raymond Kami-sama, and we shall see once and for all whose is the Kami-sama of foods. Anko slowly stumbled out the Raymond bar and over across the street into the Dango store just across the way. After a few more moments she emerged carrying four boxes as she carried them with great care, behind her came a man wearing a similar outfit to Tucci, except it had the kanji for Dango on it. Entering the store both men stared off. So Tucci, seems you have been trying to convert one who is loyal to the joyous way of the Dango, and turn her to the way of your slop, though she is of strong enough mind and faith to resist your temptations, and submit the new chef spoke with a smirk. So you think your Dango can outdo that of the Raymond Kami do you, Teruo? Well we shall see, Naruto here is one of the most faithful in the ways of the Raymond, and so he will prove you wrong, as will I Tucci challenged. Both men started glaring at each other as sparks started to fly, and both teenagers sweat dropped looking at the grown men acting like children, after a few moments they all took a seat with the Dango in front of them, both Anko and Taro, put their hands together and bowed. Bolt praised the Dango Kami-sama for what you are about to receive, for it is through his grace that we spread the word of the joyous Dango through the world, so that even more may enjoy its joyous light. Amen. Both Tucci and Naruto blinked, it's the Raymond prayer to the Raymond Kami-sama, what could this mean? All four of them lifted up their first dango sticks and took the first dango, and just as Anko before him Naruto's eyes lit up, after swallowing the first bite, Naruto set the stick down, his body shaking, both he and Tucci share a look the look of realization, they have found the Naruto's special final ingredient, getting up Tucci moves to the back. Hero smirking, what's wrong can't handle the joyous experience that is my dango. Anko looks to Naruto, who is still shaking. She smirked remembering her first bite, it was joy on a stick. Moments later Tucci comes out of the back with four bowls of Naruto Raymond, setting them down, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but for the past three years after perfecting the masterpiece that is the Naruto special, I believe your dango might actually be the missing taste, this bowl covers every taste, but that, the Raymond in this bowl is an explosion of righteous flavors and textures. But your dango is what it needs. Haruo looked at his counterpart chef and saw no deception there was only one thing for it, let us see then. Everyone took a separate bowl and pushed a dango dumpling to the top of their sticks, before dipping it into the juice of the ramen, lifting it out all four looked at the dango in front of them, before putting it into their mouths. The result was all four passing out from their taste spuds overloading and frying their brains, as steam shot out their ears in the shape of dango and ramen. 
That night Raymond and Dango met it was a righteous and joyous day for the four of them. The world would never be the same. Flashback end. The past three weeks had honestly been the happiest three weeks of Naruto's life, he had a girlfriend, he was starting the academy, he found out who his parents were, he had a new apartment, and his training couldn't be going better. That night three weeks back he and the old Hokage had put together a solid training regimen for Naruto, which has only improved over the three weeks, as he grows stronger and more training is needed. He even had Ikgao and Heid as instructors they helped him to get a better grasp of his chakra control, ninjutsu and kinjutsu. 7.30 wake up shower get dressed eat a big breakfast. 9 o'clock head to reserve training ground to meet Ikgao sensei and Heid sensei. 9.15 distribute 600 clones. 200 chakra control, 100 tree climbing and 100 leaf exercise. 15 ninjutsu basic 3, 25 henge, 25 substitution, 0 clone not needed. 100 on advanced ninjutsu, 50 shunshin, 25 kage shuriken and 25 kage kunai. Reinforced, 40 kinjutsu to jutsu 20 stances and 20 sparring. 100 on kinjutsu practice. 20 library to read up on new topics. 90 on shuriken, senbin, kunai target practice. 930 1300 hours warm up period 5 laps of the village, 200 push ups, 200 leg ups, 200 squats, 200 kicks both feet, 200 punches both hands. 1300 hours, 1415 lunch. 14 15 1600 hours, Kinjutsu to Jutsu sparing with hate sensei physical training. 1600 hours 1745, Kinjutsu to Jutsu sparing with Ikga sensei physical training. 1745, 1930 dinner. 1930 2030 dispel chakra clones in batches of 10 every few minutes. 2030 21 15 dispel ninjutsu clones in batches of 10 every few minutes. 21 15 22 30 dispel rest of clones every few minutes. 22 30 to 2300 hours rest and get ready for bed. In that 20 day period, Naruto and Anko had trained each for 210 hours roughly, though in actual spec with Naruto's 600 clones a day had put in. 42,000 hours of chakra control practice. He could now balance a leaf on his forehead and up to 1 meter off it for up to 3 hours. He had mastered the tree climbing exercise, he could stand upside down on the bottom of a tree branch for 5 hours. On the third week, he had begun water walking and even managed to last up to an hour on top of the water. 5,250 hours into each of the ninjutsu basics of henge and substitution. He could now substitute without the use of a hand sign and perform a flawless henge, although, due to the kickbus chakra it was discovered that Naruto henge isn't an illusions, but it had an actual solid forms, after the Hokage was informed about it. He dubbed the new jutsu the perfect henge and listed it as a B-class ninjutsu. 10,500 hours on Shunshin and another 5,250 hours into both Kage Shuriken and Kage Kunai, resulting in Naruto being able to Shunshin 50 yards in a second. He could keep up with low Jimin speeds with that level of skill, and with both Kage techniques, Naruto had mastered them to an extent of only needing one hand sign. The clones practiced Kenjutsu and Tejutsu for 4,002 hours each, and he himself had put in 35 hours each practice. He now had the stances of his Kaas and Kenjutsu stances learned perfectly, and the academy basic Tejutsu down so well. The Hokage had given him the scroll to his clan's Tejutsu style, known as the Swirling Waves, he had been studying it for the past week, but still wasn't confident enough in it to use it yet. He had put 21,000 hours into his Kenjutsu, at which he had breezed through the first book, after spending the first three days, 3150 hours, with his clones, making his handwriting perfect, which is required for any sealing master. Then the next five days they had spent working on the seals the first book showed until they had the skill to create them in under 30 seconds. As a result, before he moved on to the next book and then the next book, within the three weeks, 20 days. He had cleared the three beginner's books of Kenjutsu and was able to make each seal in 30 seconds solid. As a result, he had amassed quite the stockpile of seals due to that fact, though they were only the basics. Book 1. Beginner. 1 covered the history of Kenjutsu and Kenjutsu 101 The Facts, it then taught how to make storage seals for scrolls small and medium sizes, smoke seals for small smoke bombs, and distraction level explosive tags, and taught Naruto how to make his own chakra ink for his seals. Book 2. Beginner. 2. Taught how to make large storage seals, medium smoke seals and medium strength explosive tags, how to make small chakra storage seals, and then how to merge two seals together like the smoke and explosive to do both tasks. After completing that book in the week the Hokage had shown the boy how to create privacy seals which were used around his office, he also showed him how to create sound restriction seals that are applied to shinobi when they need to be quiet and can be controlled by a simple hand sign and only requires paper tags. Book 3. Beginner. 3. 
taught the final and smoke seals large and extra large. Then explosive tags large and chakra storage seals medium and started on chakra type storage seals small for different natures of chakra and then learning how to merge three seals into one, like three large explosive tags make for one big boom. But the Hokage had informed him that anything over medium was not allowed for use in the village and he must have written permission as is the law, so he sent his clones out of the village for a test run and he was right it made for one big boom and he now knew what it was like to be blown up from five different perspectives without actually being there. Realizing the boy needed to keep his home and work secure the Hokage taught the boy how to create blood lock seals, meaning they needed a blood smear to gain access to what the lock was on. But the kicker to getting the last beginner's book was it came with instructions on how to apply restriction and weight seals, which he learned how to do after he requested the Hokage to apply them to him for his third week of training, he now had 50 pounds on each limb and another 100 pounds on his chest with a level 2 restriction seal on his back. Which he released every two days for an hour to get used to the feeling, in the beginning, it was 20 pounds on each limb and 40 pounds on the chest at level 1, but in that week his body had adjusted in three days, and he added to them, now carrying 300 pounds, and with the increase of a level 2 restriction seal on his chest. Which gives the feeling of pushing through heavy water, helping his muscles to grow more. As for the rest of his skills, he now was able to hit a moving target at 50 yards 7 out of 10 times, preferring Senban to anything else, after putting in 18,900 hours target practice with his clones. The clones he had sent to the library every day had direct orders to stop reading at 2100 hours hours and return to the apartment before dispelling, the last thing they needed was the librarian complaining about the demon brat using jutsu in the library. She had already been ordered not to complain by the Hokage but 20 clones all going poof would just piss her off, in the 20 days each clone had read a book a day, meaning in 20 days he had read over 400 books and had built up quite the mass of knowledge from reading them from everything from battle tactics to history of the elemental nations and the shinobi wars. The learning the basics of how to hunt and fish and live in the wilderness and also how to grow his own fruit and vegetables, learning the natural geography of the land of fire and then as the Hokage suggested learn of the politics and laws of the village and how to get around them. After finishing those books in the first two weeks he then started to read books on more standard skillsets like carpentry, plumbing, electric wiring, carpet fitting, boiler repair, roofing, cleaning, general handyman things, and then how to manage a business and all the necessary books on running a hotel or apartment lot. He had decided while he was either at the academy or training, he would be having his clones fix up his old apartment building completely renovated and before renting the rooms for either nights or long-term leases, he needed to find some way to keep money flowing. He may have been filthy rich, but he wanted a business, and he didn't want to just skate by on his clan's money like the Achiha boy. Who had everything laid at his feet. He swore he wouldn't be like that. Two days left in his training he had started to learn the first of his clan's jutsu, he had decided to go with a fire-style jutsu, as he wanted something with a little kick to it, neither Ikka-sensei or Heit-sensei had enough chakra to do it, and their attempts could only produce a smaller version of the attack, but when Naruto did it the attack was ferocious, the technique was called. Yuzumaki Katen. Kasai Hakushu, Yuzumaki Fire Release. Fire Clap. Building up mass amounts of fire chakra into your hands and then bringing them together in a clap, causing a fiery explosion in front of the user like a Merlin 1D rocket engine that burned for over 20 seconds, the result was so great it incinerated a 30 meter long 4-5 degree arc in front of Naruto. Lucky the Hokage had wanted to witness the Jutsu's first attempt, so he set up a barrier around the training field in case something should go wrong. After the Jutsu's first attempt, Naruto's hands had third-degree burns from not using enough chakra for protection from the fire, but the Kipas chakra had healed him five minutes later. After seeing the technique strength currently, the Hokage listed it as an A-plus ranked Jutsu and forbid Naruto from using it and any other Uzumaki Jutsu in any fight until he became a genin and to use only 5% of the chakra he just used if he was fighting a shinobi from this village in a spar. Naruto understood why if the other four jutsu were as strong as this, he would kill any opponent that was hit by the full force of the attack. But now today was the first day in the academy, he had heard from the Hokage that he was in a good year with all the clans having children attending the same year as him, so he would have multiple strong peers to learn beside. Along with some promising civilian students. Which he was happy about. But what was really shocking that just the other night, the night before his last day of training he had found himself in his mindscape, first he had thought it a dream, but he quickly realized it wasn't. Flashback. Naruto woke in a sewer. Looking around he saw he was lying on a thin coating of water. Not wanting to get wet he stood up and looked around, but as he did he heard a sound coming from not too far off. He sharpened his senses and could make out that of someone crying. Following the sound, he came to a large cage with a paper tag over the lock with a kanji for seal on it. 
Realizing where he was, he walked up to the cage where he heard the sound coming from. He looked inside still cautious about what might be inside, expecting a massive claw to swipe at him any moment, he was shocked when he saw no massive fox inside, but a small form of someone inside curled up into a bowl crying, muttering I'm sorry, I'm sorry over and over again. Walking into the cage, still cautious, he approached the figure shocked to see it was a girl with long crimson hair down to the base of her back, about his age. She wore filthy rags over her that looked like they had once been beautiful clothes, long since destroyed and faded by time. Hearing his footsteps the girl looked up at him, he saw her deep red eyes that were puffy with tears. Seeing him she gasped before quickly bowing on her hands and knees to him, screaming out loud, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's all my fault please forgive me, I never wanted this for anyone. And then proceeding to cry I'm sorry over and over again making Naruto's eyes widen. What is she talking about? What is going on wait a minute, we're in the cage, in me, the only other thing that's meant to be in here is the, the Kikbi Naruto said, softly before he took a step back from her, you're the Kikbi no Kitsune aren't you? The girl continued to cry, but nodded, I'm sorry it's all my fault. Looking at the girl Naruto grew more confused. The Kikbi no Kitsune was meant to be a massive beast of destruction and devastation that was meant to make mountains topple with a single tail and create lakes with a footstep. Yet here was this girl that couldn't even be older than him, crying and begging for his forgiveness, none of this made sense. The girl in front of him was crying still, but swallowing his fear he walked towards the girl and knelt down to her, please don't cry he said softly as he put his hand on her shoulder, making her flinch from the contact, you're the Kikbi, aren't you? The girl's nodded head still bowed, but Naruto shook his head, putting his hand under her chin and bringing her up to meet his eye, please talk to me, you're the Kikbi aren't you? She nodded, again, hi, Naruto-sama, I am. Dot. Bringing up another question with the Sama honorific, why do you call me Sama, and why are you crying? She looked away from him before answering, I am the reason your life is like it was and still is, I am the reason the villagers hate you. I am the reason you were beaten multiple times a week, and the reason your parents are dead, I've ruined the life of someone so innocent that didn't deserve it, it should be me they glare at, me they beat. I should be the one to suffer not you. Naruto was taken back by the whole statement, this can't be the Kikbi, this isn't right, how can you be the same Kikbi that attacked the village so mercilessly 12 years ago, that took the lives of over a third of the village, how is any of this happening? It's all my fault for not resisting the extraction and gain jutsu more, it's all my fault that this happened, the girl said painfully. Hearing that Naruto's eyes widened, extraction, gain jutsu, what? The Kikbi started to cry, I was ripped from your Ka Samai the man in the mask and placed under Gain Jutsu the night of your birth, the one in the mask ordered me to attack your village. I, I tried to resist but it didn't work and I just kept on attacking, even after the man's control fell, I was still trapped until your two cents sealed me, I would never have attacked otherwise, us foxes are pranksters and jokers, we hate violence, unless it is to protect our own, we would never attack anyone. Naruto's legs gave way beneath him halfway through the conversation, the man in the mask, he was behind it all, his parents and Jiji's wife's deaths, the whole Kikbi attack, it was him behind it all, he was the reason he was hated, he was the reason for his pain, it was all him. Snapping back to the scene in front of him, the girl, Kikbi, was crying again. Naruto realized none of this was her fault and quickly embraced the poor crying girl in a hug, making her immediately stop crying. It's okay, it's alright. None of his is your fault he said softly to her. The Kikba's eyes widened hearing that, how could he have forgiven her so quickly, all the pain he's endured because of her, why, how, it didn't make sense to her, why. She said softly just enough for him to hear, but before he could respond she pushed him away to arm's length, why can you forgive me so easily, I'm the reason for all your suffering and pain, I'm the reason behind it all, you should hate me, you should. Slap. The sound echoed in the cage, the girl felt a burning sensation on her cheek, he had slapped her, he had just slapped the Kikbi no Kitsune, and now everyone in the audience is thinking, damn dude's got some balls on him. She looked back at him to see his face filled with rage, his eyes red in slits, as he glared at her, the first thing that ran through her mind that it had all been an act, and now he was going to take his revenge on her over and over again and again, and she would accept it. But that was why the next words that came out of his mouth were so shocking. No you're not, that bastard in the mask is, he's the one who has done all of this. It's his fault, not yours. You're just a victim like me, like the rest of the village, it's all his fault. Naruto yelled. Hearing him yell she just couldn't help but break down in tears once more, she lunged for him hugging him crying into his shoulder, thank you over and over again, bawling like a little girl, blinking his eyes faded back to their usual blue, and after a few moments Naruto slowly lowered himself to the ground as her legs gave way and they both sat down her still hugging and crying into him. He let her cry it out. After a few minutes she finally stopped crying and was just hugging him, but she was now asleep. They just lay there, he wasn't sure what to do or say, he had a girl, who was the kickbee on his chest, what would you do? 
but he soon felt the tug of morning coming on his body and he was going to be waking soon, so gently shaking her to wake her up she stirred. Hey, wake up, I need to go. Blinking awake she opened her eyes and saw Naruto, she nodded getting up, hi, Naruto-sama. He shook his head, you don't have to call me that, you know I don't blame you for my life, so just call me what you want. Hi, Naruto-sama, she said again making him sigh. Anything other than that hey speaking of names what do I call you anyway, I highly doubt a being that's been around for centuries has gone without a name, and I doubt it's Kikbi no Kitsu Naruto asked with a smirk. Slowly she nodded, hi, my name is Akane, Naruto-sama. Naruto shook his head with a slight smile, very well then, Akane chan he said, making her blush at the affectionate suffix, I've got to be going now, so I guess I'll see you in my next dream. The cane stepped forward, actually Naruto-sama if you want to see me all you have to do is meditate, it will bring you here so we can talk, or you can rip the bottom corner of the tag over the lock, and we can converse mentally anytime, you can of course close the link anytime. Naruto nodded, thanks, I'll do that on the way out, he said before looking around, has this place always been such a dump? The cane nodded her head, all the beatings you took made it this way. A dark outlook makes for a dark mind. Naruto frowned, well I'll fix that for you on my next visit, but now I can feel Anko-chan starting to wake me up, so I've got to go, he said, walking towards the cage and jumping up ripping the bottom corner of the tag off just before he disappeared. Flashback end. After that little experience, he, of course, told the Hokage everything, needless to say, the elderly Hokage was shocked to hear about it all. But the one thing that shocked him more than anything was that the Kikbi no Kitsune, the strongest of the nine bijk was a woman, and that Naruto had the balls to slap said woman across the face to snap her out of her funk. And he kept said balls after doing so, his respect for the blonde that was already so sky high went even higher after hearing that. Chapter End Alright that's it for today's video guys, let me know in the comments section how was the story, and also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will meet you in another video, peace out.